bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So today I want to revisit an article I put on the blog um, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, it was just um, something I was noticing that I wanted to discuss in terms of uh, black male representation in Brazil's media. Um, for anybody who's watched, spent any time studying Brazil's media, you know, I've been following the Brazil thing and, uh, you know, just the situation of black Brazilians for over two decades. And I just remember in the early parts of the 2000s, you just didn't see many black part, uh, protagonists in either film productions. You know, Brazil's film industry is, is trying to rebound now. But even today, it's still dominated by American films. You know, uh, during the years that I lived in, in Sao Paulo, it generally every week you would go if you went to a movie theater you would see that about eight out of every 10 films that were featured at a film theater a movie theater were usually american you know the other two might be brazilian it might be one brazilian film showing at another uh film from another country so you know i remember a pop popular film i forget the name of it but um i think it was a french film i remember some years ago that was pretty popular maybe some of you uh are familiar with that film but it was right around the time that i started getting into the situation of black brazilians that uh people were starting to discuss how black brazilians were being presented in the media uh, one of the most important studies that came out at that time was by uh, the director joel zito araujo he is probably one of the most important uh black filmmakers in Brazil. And not only is he a film director, but he's also studied the image of black Brazilians in the media. You know, he did, did his dissertation on that. He, like many black Brazilians, I think he studied at the University of Texas. And part of his dissertation got turned into a book as well as a documentary of the same name. You know, name of that, uh, the book and the documentary was called A Negação do Brasil. Uh, which basically means denying Brazil. And he, I think he studied the image of black Brazilians in the ever popular Brazilian soap operas, which are called novellas. I think it was like in a 20 or 30 some year period. And he just broke it down. You know, not only are black Brazilians very underrepresented in the novellas, but the images, the, the roles that they're chosen to play are often just follow along you know, a very narrow uh, group of stereo stereotypical roles that are, <laughs> you know, left to the side for our black character, right? So it was a few years after I started studying the situation of Black Brazil when the movie Cidade de Deus came out. Now, when it was released around the world, uh, well, in English-speaking countries, it was released at City of God. And I, I still remember being in Bahia when I watched that movie. And, you know, I was um, knowing how I had watched a lot of Brazilian movies up to that point, And I never saw, you know, there may have been a couple, but these movies go back to the cinema novel period where you could find the lead roles of the film being by black, you know, black actors, you know, black actors and black actresses that kind of like disappeared. And when Sidaji de Deus came out in 2002, I remember sitting in that movie theater and I'm like, wow, it's, this is a pretty large black cast. But I left the film thinking like, okay, it's great that you've got so many black characters and black actors in this film, but what were the images coming out? It, it, it depicted, you know, uh, a criminal lifestyle. It, it, it associated the, the favela with, uh, you know, it's a place of a lot of black Brazilians and a lot of the, the criminal element of whatever city. So it it was funny because at that time, you know, obviously um, 
African Americans and just Americans in general are familiar with BET. And at a certain point, uh, you have to ask yourself, which is more important? Is it the have, seeing black bodies, black people on screen or the images that they present? It was it was to the point where I was asking the question, is it better to have representation even when it's negative versus having no black representation in the media at all? And that's that's the question that come that came into my mind when I saw Sadat de Dales. It was kind of like you saw elements of uh, Boys in the Hood in this film. You saw elements of Menace to Society. There were even elements of uh, I think it was Black Caesar. And I found a study that showed how there were a few scenes from Sadat de Dales were clearly influenced by the classic black exploitation film, Black Caesar. So anyway, um, without stalling uh, anymore, I don't want to make this a drawn out, you know, just <laughs> a video that doesn't that needs to be an hour long. Let me just get straight into this article. Um, you know, obviously, I'll have a lot more to say as I go. So this piece is called Black Bandits how Brazil's media continues to perpetuate the racist image of black criminals. So these are just some images from some um, series and novellas, you know, starring black Brazilians. And these are three different male, black male actors, right? Without even seeing the production, I mean, what comes to mind when you see black men, you know, portraying these type of roles, okay? Just ask that, you know, what, what do you think, what comes to mind when you see this? So in past reports, I have referenced the works of the filmmaker Joel Zito Araujo, perhaps most often his groundbreaking 2000 documentary Onega Santo do Brasil, again, translated as Denying Brazil, that broke down and analyzed the presence and stereotypes of black Brazilian characters in the history of Brazil's ever popular soap operas, which are called novellas. There have also been posts that detail some of the stereotypes that seem to be tried and true representations of black Brazilians on the small screen. A few of those stereotypes include the Mai Preta, which is a character that's somewhat similar to the American black mammy, the maid, uh, the faithful bodyguard, the slave, the sensual black woman and the trickster. OK, so this is an image featuring actor Sal Georgie. Uh, he's in the middle here. And that's from the Netflix series, Ear Money Dodgy, which means brotherhood. Another of the most common stereotypical characters is the criminal or thug element. There are too many examples of the character to go through thoroughly in this article. But back in 2012, I posted one of my first pieces on how black Brazilian men are often cast in these roles. That year, the global television network debuted the series Suburbia which was promoted as groundbreaking as it featured a 90% black cast, which was at that time, it was unheard of for Brazilian television. And to tell you the truth, it's still kind of unheard of, even though this is quickly changing. But after high hopes and promotion, the series quickly descended into the very same stereotypes that had pre been presented for years on Brazil's television market. Record TV, or as you can see, Record TV, another one of uh, the country's top television networks, um, it had already explo explored the guns and drug theme with black character on its uh, novella, Turma do Ghetto. And as Suburbio continued, the character Clayton, portrayed by the talented actor uh, Fabricio Bolivera, took on some of the characteristics of the murderous drug kingpin, Zay Pequeno, or Lil Zay in the highly touted 2002 film, Sidaja de Deus, again, translated as City of God. This is an image from the novella Forza, da, Forza do Querer. Uh, this is actor Jonathan Azevedo, and he played the drug dealer Sabia in this novella, okay? Notice all of the, uh, the firearms in the background here. When I look at many of, these, many of these images, I think of a line that the late great uh, comedian Paul Mooney's character in the Spike Lee film Bamboozled said. Why do they treat us like that? Even with the outcry and criticism of these images, it appears that at the start of the third decade of the 21st century, such portrayals of black men have continued. For example, producers didn't seem to think they were wasting the talents of actor Douglas Silva 
who played a prominent role in the Sadaja Dedeo's film as a criminal figure. In the popular novella Amor, Dama, Amor de Mai, uh, Silva portrays a drug dealer, and besides his white friend Sandro, who became a respectable and rich man, his social circle was made up of black criminals. In Sidaji de Deos, Silva portrayed a young Zepikino who displayed a penchant for murder and violence at a young age. Actor uh, Leandro Firmino portrayed an older and even more violently murderous Zepikino. Like most of the black actors in the film, neither Silva nor Firmino were able to parlay their success in that film into A-list acting careers. In the series In Poodles, Firmino's character enters a life of crime after losing his job. So this is uh, Douglas Silva. Uh, he played uh, Little Zay or what they call, I think they called him Little Dice at the beginning of the film. He played uh, Zay Piquino as a child. And this was the character Marconi that he played in a recent novella, Amor de Mine, right? When we consider the fact that black men are regularly judged as suspects when they are seen in upper crust neighborhoods, we must also ask what effect these types of characters disseminated in the mass media have on the Brazilian psyche. In 2017, a story shared on Facebook warned residents of Rio's richest neighborhood that there were two black men walking around on a beach. There's no way to separate this story from the way black people are treated when they try to enjoy the city's finest beaches. All of these links that I have in this article, I'm going to uh, explore them later on after I finish with this, uh, this, this article that I'm talking about. This question was raised again recently when a black surfing teacher, Mateos Hibedo, was wrongly accused by a white couple of stealing his own bike. In novellas directed by uh, Manuel Carlos and many other soap operas, which are set in the upper crust Rio neighborhood of Leblon, uh, Leblon uh, there is a lack of black protagonists who are not connected in some way to poverty or criminality. Black Brazilians are rarely even seen as consumers, individuals with spending power or victims of white people. The treatment that actress Etika Januza once received in the store is evidence that black people are automatically assumed to be poor. What people don't seem to realize is that when black faces only appear in these sorts of roles in television productions or on the news, particularly those of the sensationalist type, it produces an unconscious bias that instinctively connects what is uh, regularly seen on TV with real life. I don't have to explain why this is. One other point that I would be remiss if I didn't point point it out is that I don't see any coincidence in the fact that all of the actors mentioned in this article, Sel Giorgi, Oliveira, Silva, Firmino and Logan, uh, that portray criminal characters are all dark skinned black men. I don't know if you noticed that, but this is a uh, low. This is Rafael Logan. This is a. Uh, what's this? Leandro Firmino. He plays a in the famous uh, City of God film. Here you have uh, Douglas Silva. Here you have uh, uh, Jonathan Azevedo. This is Sel Georgi. These are all not only just black men, but they are all dark skinned black men. And these are the roles that they, you know, they, these are the roles that they're given. All right. Let me see here. Um, films and television series in which black people participate in criminal scenarios include the aforementioned City of God. A spinoff such as the Sidaja Dos Omens, translated as uh, City, City of Men, which was actually a really good series that I remember from uh, the early to mid first uh, first decade of the 2000s. The film and series, as well as the series, uh, a series such as Ear Money Dodgy on Netflix and Ink Boodles on Fox. So as you can see, uh, Outlets such as Netflix and Fox Brazil are presenting more opportunities to black Brazilians that Brazil's regular media just simply ha hasn't had, you know, over the last five decades, we could say. But again, OK, um, you now have Netflix, you have Fox Brazil, you have um, Amazon Prime that is uh, offering opportunities to Afro-Brazilian you know, screenwriters and actors, producers, directors, etc. But it remains to be seen how some of these images, what they're going to say about the black Brazilian population. If we don't see series such as these depicting black people as criminals, then 
Then we have Brazil's long history of novellas set in the era of slavery. And there's a bunch of those. This is a scene from the series uh, Cidade dos Homens. As I've argued before, the only way such a scenario can change is when black Brazilians can begin to produce their own content. The recently released Wolo TV internet streaming channel is one such example. The channel presents a more well-rounded depiction of black life with its debut series, Casa da Vó, being one of the most representative programs of what it means to be black in Brazil today. With debates on the idea of black money and conversations on the job market, the problems with the black community as well as victories and achievements become more visible. Okay, so this is a scene from the uh, the streaming series from uh, Wolo TV uh, called Casa da Vó. Um, this is a project that was headed up or is headed up by um, an Angolan guy who has been living in Brazil for several years. So, you know, he found some seed money from external sources, you know, and in an interview, he talked about, you know, it's difficult to get these resources within Brazil because, you know, Brazil's traditional media still doesn't see the value in, uh, you know, investing in seeing black representation on the big and the small screen. So he sought, you know, funding sources outside of the country. Today's black community in Brazil is seeing a growing number of black doctors, scientists, lawyers, and entrepreneurs. But because they aren't viewed in the mainstream media as experts in various fields, this often leads to shock when people encounter black people in these particular areas. You know, I did an, an article, I can't remember the month and year, but it just detailed how there was one particular uh, Afro-Brazilian woman who is a professor at a university. And because she's, you know, first people have difficulty believing that she's a professor somewhere. And then second, when they accept that she's a professor, she they look at her like, oh, you must be the head of like the, uh, you know, the black studies department, the Afro oriented, you know, studies department. And so this is another thing that's, a, you know, a complaint among black activists is like. Black people are only expected to speak on race issues. You know, with so many things and fields of knowledge and expertise that people can have, when people see black Brazilians in certain spaces, they automatically relegate them to a certain, um, you know, to a certain position that where they're expected to be. You you, you don't expect to see, you know, uh, a black person as a CEO of a bank or you don't expect to see uh, a black person who's the head of a, you know, I don't know, he's a professor of, of physics or something. If a black person is studying in a university and they have a degree or an advanced degree, they're expected to be in something connected to, you know, the social sciences, which is another stereotype that, uh, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to take some time for people to come out of the idea that those are the only areas where black people can study and excel in. I think we see some of the same dynamics playing out in the United States, but it's really uh, becoming such in Brazil. Several years ago, after the controversial surrounding the controversy surrounding the lack of black actors being nominated for Oscar awards, there was a brief discussion of a boycott of Brazilian television programming and series that portray black people in stereotypical manners. If you remember that, I remember uh, this was just talk back in the time, like Chris Rock. I don't know, it was 2017, 18, somewhere around that time. And there was this talk on the Internet among African-Americans of boycotting the Oscars. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, let me see. Where was I? In reality, this idea was never really considered at the time because there are too many black actors who depend on this type of work, regardless of what the roles said about the black population. What I'm, what I'm saying here is that, you know, um, it's, it's, it's changing now. I can honestly say it is changing now, but there was a time. In, in, the, in Brazil's televised media where black actors didn't really see uh, chances of having a prominent role in a television series or a novella if the theme <clears throat> wasn't a throwback to the slavery era. It was like a lot of people, a lot of actors would celebrate if one of the major networks was produce, producing a novella or a television series about Brazil's slavery era because that way they had a better chance of getting some work. All right. And I remember, you know, back in 2016, and I, I'm going to get into one of those posts too. 2016, two different uh, Brazilian television networks, I think it was Global and Hitch Hit Core, 
they both had novellas on television, you know, where it was set in the slavery era. So <laughs> the, the these two novellas was just full of dark skinned black people. And this is, you know, this is the thing where there can never be any real talk of any type of boycott um, coming from black Brazilians in terms of boycotting like Brazil's top network global because they still wait on these as small as the opportunities are. They want to get those opportunities and, and they don't want to you know, stir up the pot. They don't want to uh, heat, you know, heat up the kitchen to where they can't get these roles anymore. The, again, I'm starting to see this change now. That's going to be an article I have to discuss in, you know, hopefully within the next few weeks, because I've seen a lot of changes going down in Brazil's media recently. Uh, just a lot of more of uh, black leading figures, you know, protagonists in television series, novellas and films. Uh, you have sitcoms coming out. So I have to say, you know, I honestly, somebody who's been following this thing for 23 years, I can honestly say things have been changing. But it also makes me wonder where is all of this going all of a sudden with so many black actors getting so many opportunities in Brazil. Um, so where was I saying? What was I saying? OK, the only way that platforms such as Wolo can grow is if Afro-Brazilians start watching black national uh, productions that portray the community as it really is. This would also help white people in the process of deprogramming the images that have been embedded in their minds. Again, you know, where they were saying how there was a Facebook post, I think it said in 2017, where somebody put out a post because they saw two black men walking on a beach in Rio, like, you know, call the police. What are these two guys up to? So this is what I'm saying. What's in the mind of Brazilian society as a whole when they see even just a pair of black men or a group of black people? you know, hanging out in a mall or walking around on a beach. Some years ago, it was making new headlines every day when all of these black folks, mostly black youth, were organizing these uh, these groups where they would just go to, uh, let's say, upper cross, shop, upper cross shopping malls. And it was just, it was absurd what I was seeing, you know, police, you know, stopping these people and frisking them and pulling weapons on them for just frequenting the... Uh, you know, the the shopping malls, this is something that's just, you know, it's a regular occurrence in Brazil, whether black people are on the beach or in, they're in a more upper cross shopping, shopping mall, they're going <clears> to <throat> call attention from security. In Brazil, it may be true that black people are the most arrested and imprisoned, but this doesn't mean that they are always the most criminal. Various studies show that when white people are busted, they actually have more narcotics on them than black people. I will explore this in more depth in a future article, but the bottom line here is that not all black people are criminals and not all white people are law abiding citizens. It's about time that the media acknowledges this. So anyway, let me go through a couple of the links that I have here. This story says uh, the protagonist, the lead character and actor of the blockbuster film City of God. You know, in 2019, it was shown that he was a uh, he was driving around an Uber. He was a he was an Uber driver. All right. Again. So what does it say? It just it it shows like what are the opportunities for Afro-Brazilian actors? You know, this was a, a big film that made headlines around the world. But yet just, you know. In, in the 15 years since that film was released, you know, this guy was driving an Uber and, you know, uh, one of the. He picked up a, a young lady who needed a ride somewhere and she recognized him from City of God. Like, wow, he's driving an Uber now. You know, what does that say about the opportunities for Afro-Brazilian actors? You know, um, there was actually a documentary that came out that showed what happened to some of the characters that uh, played in City of God. Most of them were not able to, you know, get a, a, a sustainable they couldn't build a sustainable career as actors. You know, the guy who played the lead role of Zepi Keno, you know, Leandro Firmino, you know, he got sparing roles over the years, but, you know, he never blew up as an actor. Um, let me see what else we have here. The one person who blew up after Cidade de Deus or City of God was Alice Braga. And as it, as it happens to be, she's the one who's one of the lighter skinned actors in the movie. She's also related to, uh, uh, one of Brazil's most popular actresses, you know, in, in the country and outside of the country, uh, Sonia Braga. This, I think this is her niece, maybe. Um, there's so much I could talk about here. 
this is a this is a story that <laughs> came out some years ago talking about they called him the uh the Menjigo Gato, which just means you know the hot looking beggar. Rafael Nunes, you know, some women found him, you know, sleeping in the streets. You know, he had been uh, probably uh, like drug addicted. You know, they dusted him off and cleaned him up. They couldn't believe it. It was like, how can a man this beautiful, this handsome be living on the street? Because being homeless and living on the street begging for money is something that's associated with the black population. Matter of fact, that's what this particular cartoon uh, images is showing. Because this happened to a, a young white model named Loemi Marcos, Mar Marquez. She fell victim to crack addiction, but, it, you know, she dirty, just living on the streets, you know, addicted. And the cameras and the press immediately went to her. She's surrounded by all of these black people. And they'll just like step over to the black people who are addicted or, you know, are living on the streets, or whatever. And they go straight to the white girl. This is when, you know, even in a situation of being a crack addict and living on the street, you know, white skin brings privileges, which is <laughs> which is the point here. The media brought former model Luami Marquez, another victim of a crack addiction to the public spotlight. They just they dusted her off and put her back on TV. I don't think she got big or anything, but the fact that they brought her on TV, you know, she actually got famous for a minute again. Uh, let me see this piece here again. This is uh, the article that was posted on Facebook where they were saying, you know, this is an urgent alert. There's two black guys. I don't think it actually says black guys here, but basically they put out an alert because they saw these two men walking on the beach. Like, you know, watch yourself. You know, these guys are probably up to no good, you know, be on the lookout. Two Negroes spotted walking on the beach, right? <laughs> Facebook post by resident of uh, Rio's richest neighborhood again, again, displays racist sentiments. Now I'm not saying that's what they actually said on, you know, be on the lookout, these two Negroes. I don't even think the word Negroes appears in the, uh, in the post, but the point is the picture that's posted here, you obviously see two dark skinned black men and people are going to be wondering, Oh my God, what are those guys up to? Then that leads to, uh, racism on uh, Rio's beaches. Residents don't want poor blacks there dirtying up the beaches. You know, it's been found that the, the beach is one of the most, uh, you know, some ways segregated because if it's white residents coming to that beach, they assume that these white resident, residents live somewhere near the beach and they belong there. Whereas if black and brown people come down from the favelas, this is the treatment that they get. Okay. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's been reports in the media, you know, numerous times over the years over, you know, sometimes there's a criminal element that comes down to the beach and just starts snatching purses and belongings and stuff. But it's difficult because because you have a small group of people doing that. Does that mean if I go to the beach and I have brown skin, all of a sudden you're going to be watching me because, you know, I'm going to be trying to snatch somebody's purse. This was another story from 2021. You know, the guy on the right was accused of stealing his own bike when in actuality, the person who stole the bike was actually this. This. OK, wait, that's not how the story went. Um, This guy, the guy on the right proved that he had actually um, the bike he was accused of stealing was his own. But they picked up this guy later on for some other petty crimes. Let me see uh, if I can remember what that story said. OK. Companies fire a couple who accused black men of stealing his own bicycle in Rio de Janeiro. So these two people automatically assume that the black guy was <laughs> stealing a bike and it was actually his own bike. Um, on the other hand, this dude right here, Igor uh, Martins Pinedo, was suspected of a theft of an electric bicycle in the front of shopping Leblon. Again, Leblon being uh, one of the upper crust neighborhoods in Rio. <laughs> so, OK. Why you're all targeting the black guy who didn't do anything, you know, this guy's getting away, you know, getting away with his own criminal activity. This was just what I said in, you know, the previous piece, still a slave in 2016. Why are Brazil's top two TV networks both airing series based in the slavery era? So Global was showing one series based in the slavery era, and I think it hit you hit core. These are the two, uh, Escrava Mai, which means slave mother, and the other one, Liberdade, Liberdade, meaning freedom, freedom. And, you know, Brazil pr produces a lot of uh, novellas that are based in the slavery era. So this is what I was saying about a lot of black actors that keep their mouth shut because, 
at least they're working. It was like, you know, okay, it's another novella based in the slave era, but at least I'm going to have some work. So these are some of the images from some of these novellas, you know, based in, you know, like the 17th or 18th century or whatever. So whenever there's going to be a slave series or novella, there you're going to have black folks. There's going to be a huge cast of black folks. It's one of the few times black people can, you know, rub their hands together like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm guaranteed to get a role in this film or uh, novella. Um, so our turn, invisible on small screen, black Brazilians create their own TV channels. A lot of these people not only are becoming, you know, uh, stars on YouTube. This is, uh, I forget his name. Is it uh, Januari or Garcia? I think it might be. He created the Wolo Television Network. Um, and he's streaming his own sitcoms on his, you know, on this, this platform. Let me see what else we have in this article here. Yeah, it's basically what this is talking about. If this is from the series, the the first like uh, sitcom that uh, the Wolo TV streaming network, you know, what they push pushed out there. Um, American sitcoms like Everybody Hates Chris and um, you know, My Wife and Kids and That's So Raven and Fresh Prince of Bel Air were huge in Brazil. So it's kind of like they kind of mimicked. They took some influence from those television series and. Now people are trying to come up with their own productions that are featuring, you know, majority black casts. Okay, this is a story that goes back to 2016. It says why no black Brazilian actor will ever boycott the nation's top TV network, Hedgy, Hedgy Global. It's like they're not going to do it as much as they don't like the depictions of black life or the minority of black roles featured in these novellas. So they're not going to boycott because, you know, Global is the top ne uh, television network in the country. You know, they'd rather it was almost like they're saying we'd rather take the scraps off of the big table than to get nothing. Right. Uh, veteran actress, uh, actor Milton Gonsalves. He died a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Um, what profile do I fit? Racial profiling. Why are black men in vehicles suspicious? You know, this guy says he carries his passport wherever just in case you know, the police are going to pull him over for something, you know. And this is something that I've talked about over the years. Like if a black man is seen with something that, you know, mainstream society says he's not supposed to have that. If it's a black man, he's driving a luxurious car. It's like you have to pull him over because, you know, how, what's this black man doing with a car like this? What else we have here? So rich, powerful white men being cuffed and taken to prison is a common sight in Brazil. So why is it that black people are deemed the criminal element? You know, I think that title says it all. You're constantly seeing, you know, uh, white collar crimes, you know, and it, being that these are elites, these are white men who are always arrested doing, you know, doing something um, illegal. Some years ago, when, um, Brazil's economy was said to have exploded. You know, Brazil was arriving on the world scene and it, it, it had gotten into the top 10 economies of the world. It had passed England and I think it was France, Italy. I think it was either it crept up on England, you know, before the economy just, you know, exploded. You know, it, it dropped again. Um, but at the time, you know, they were the, all of, you know, Amer uh, many of the American media outlets were talking about, you know, Brazil is finally, you know, showing its full potential. I remember in a 60 Minutes episode, they were talking about Ike Batista. At the time, he was Brazil's richest man. Um, this was on 60 Minutes. And then here's him. This is him on the right being taken to prison on corruption charges in 2017. You know how, you know, how the mighty fall. Um, some of the biggest scandals that you're going to hear about in Brazil, the 49 of Petro Loan. 49 people accused of involvement in the Petro Lao scandal. Centered on Brazil's Petrobras, you know, the multinational oil company based in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. The question, where are the black faces? Forty nine of those people who are being investigated for corruption, you're not going to see any black faces here. But why is it? You know, question is, you know, these are white collar criminals who make a way, get away with, you know, enormous amounts of money, you know, white collar crimes. But, you know, it's going to be the black people who are trying to survive, you know, steal a bag of chips, cookies or potato chips or something. And you're going to take them to jail. But these guys, well, what I'm saying is the image of the criminal remains, you know, connected to the black face while these guys are getting away with, you know, robbing the country blind. Right. 
this is more of those, you know, these people who, who have been condemned connected to these huge uh, corruption cases. Flavio Bolsonaro brings scandal to presidential palace. This is the former president, Jair Bolsonaro, and one of his sons. You're black. You can't afford it. A music executive and actress demonstrate once again that be it in America or Brazil, black people are treated the same. This has something to do with uh, two stories that came out relatively, you know, close to each other. One in the United States in Washington, D.C., where this black man was assumed to be the wrong line. I think uh, he was getting on an airplane and I think he might have been in the uh, the class A section. And, you know, this white woman behind him was looking like, what are you doing in this line? <laughs> you can't be in the uh, the class A section. You're supposed to be in the economic section. Something similar happened to. This didn't have anything to do with a plane flight, but the actress Etika Januza, she went to a, a shopping store. I think she was, you know, I don't know, buying some clothes. And she says. Um, Today, I went to a, uh, a shop. And I had already chosen a product and, you know, the, the employee came up to her and asked her, did you see the price? And the employee pointed to the ticket, you know, the uh, the label, and, you know, with the with, with his or her finger. And so the actress responded, yes, I see it. And then the, the, the employee says, well, are you going to want to, you know, buy this on installments? You know, how many payments you want to make to get this? And she says, no, I'm going to just buy it outright. So the point is, here she is, uh, an actress who, you know, she has been on a number of uh, global television uh, novellas, but yet she walks into a shopping store and it's assumed that she doesn't have money to buy the, the, the things that she picked up. The stereotypical image of the black consumer, right? Speaking of Erica Januza in 2012, she uh, I think this was her big her first big break in uh, the media and it was in a television series called suburbia it was a tv series i think it was five or six episode 90 percent black cast and it was promoted heavily on the internet like you know it's the first time you're going to see a television series where it has a 90 percent black cast but as i said in the previous article the the this series quickly descended into all of the stereotypes that black brazilians say we don't want to be depicted like this in the media anymore so these are two of the images from um this is I talked about this Turma do Ghetto and Cidade de Deus, you know, the black criminal element, you know, <laughs> black men with weapons. And this actor here, you know, he his character descended into this gangster lifestyle on this suburbia television uh, program. So, you know, this is um, this is an ongoing struggle. OK, if you're going to put us on television, what type of roles are we going to get, you know? So that's it always leads to the question, is it better not to have black representation than to have the representation that we have, again, depicting the same stereotypes that we've grown accustomed to? This is a story. Um, this is a post from 2017. Eight racist stereotypes that Brazilian novellas need to stop using the continuous invisibility and devaluation of the black population. So basically, it's just saying here, uh, Joel Zito Araujo and others. In studying Brazilian novellas, they have like pointed out eight tried and true stereotypes that you're going to see when black people appear in these novellas. You know, they're already for years. They've been just like almost totally excluded, as you can see here from 1995 to 2014. This represents the average of white characters on these novellas. It's you know, 81, 89, 94, 85, 93, 91 percent from 2000, you know, 2009 to 2014. And you see these numbers all in the 80s and 90s. So black people don't really have, you know, a lot of representation in the novellas. Again, this is changing now. But even so, if you look at the images of, uh, of what the characters represent for black Brazilians, and you see the tried and true stereotype, you have uh, the maid, where she might be nosy, uh, se seductive or submissive. The faithful Jagunko, you know, what does that mean? Um, the ve a very loyal black servant dedicated to his white boss. The slave, obviously. The fiery, sensuous black woman is a, another common stereotype. The malandro, or we, we, you can translate that as the trickster or the hustler. Then you have the perfect black person, right? So these are roles that are set aside for, for black characters and black actors. You know, it doesn't really portray a full diversity of range of personalities that, 
you know, we can say represents black life in Brazil. So this has been the, the complaint for, you know, several years. I'm seeing this change now, but there's a reason why all of a sudden we're starting to see more uh, black representation in some of these novellas, films, comedy series, etc. But I wanted to introduce this piece today just to know, you know, how this whole thing started, because I'm noticing a change that's coming down. And I've just been curious as to, you know, what's going on all of a sudden that they want to present all of these black people, you know, whether it's in online streaming or if it's in Brazilian film productions or novellas, we've seen an increase in black representation. But why? So just wanted to introduce this piece first before I, you know, I wanted to set this up to give people more context on the history of black Brazilians in novellas, television series and films before I move on to the next piece. So curious to know what you thought about this. Leave your comments, you know, below. Consider subscribing to this channel. Share this video. Click on the notification bell so I can um, so you'll be alerted when my next video goes up. And with that said, I hope to see you all when I put the next video up.